Let me start with Ryan. Ryan probably has learned in the last two years probably what it took me 35 years to learn. You guys have a lot of knowledge, and a lot of things you guys all say, I forget. I do have a lot of knowledge, yeah, but I don't always use it all the time. And you three are using it more because even though I do the tours, there's a lot of knowledge I do impart on people. It's in a parameter. Rarely do right. I step outside. Ryan, again, I've told you how great I thought your podcasts are. And Doug, same thing. I love what you're doing. Of course, my man, uh, Craig, what we, we've been doing over the last couple of years. So I don't know. Let's see if it works. If, if it goes somewhere, great. If not, <laughs> we've killed an hour or two hours. Before we go live, a Facebook memory just popped up from this time in 2015. And I had posted about the great conversation that we just had with you for Slycast where we talked your life and we reviewed Rocky one through four. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. it was your first that... appearance on the show. It's five years? <laughs> yeah, it was five years ago, uh, like two or three five days ago. Years. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad for Mike. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're not going to get anything through us, so... <laughs> If, if anybody has anything to gain, it's the three of us out of this. Yeah, see, that's just it. That's why I disagree. I think we all can continue to benefit from stuff like this because especially now, who knows how long this is going to go on. And once we get back to normal, I mean, who knows what the new normal is going to look like. So maybe maybe entertainment and podcasting is the way it's going to be. That's why I'm trying. I'm doing like these 30-second videos. That, they're dumb. They're so dumb and goofy. But... I don't know if I can get a bead on what works to get people to be a little more entertained or whatever. Maybe I can, I don't know, join some culture of zaniness. And, and so, but that's what I think all of us can do. I really, I, I really do. So I, I have always believed the Rocky tent is so big or the Stallone tent. There's so much room for everybody to put out what their thing is. What's your niche? You know? That's my thought. All right, yeah, let's just crack wise and, and talk. So I'm going to set up to go live uh, the YouTube channel, which we're almost at 1,000 subscribers right now. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Stuff like this is going to push it because this is different. This is, again, our niche audience that love Stallone, Rocky, Rambo, whatever it is where the conversation goes. It can stay on one topic for like 40 minutes. It can bounce around. Somebody could take the lead for a little bit. They're, I don't know. This is all... It's what I've I got want. about a dozen pages of notes on Rhinestone, uh, Mike, if you'd like to riff on that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go live because yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're talking. We're talking. Okay, so here we go. Watch last night, Mike. Over the top. Oh, nice. Well, let's talk about over the top. <laughs> Go ahead. What were your thoughts Ryan, on Ryan, it? Are you there? Are we on? <laughs> Ryan, are has you your really opinion there? on over the top changed since we covered it? Has my opinion changed? It's no. It's a horrible movie. It's a horrible movie. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not going to disagree, but it's so horrible. It's like having an ugly child. You have to love and give extra attention to that child. I love rhinestone. I can still sing Drinkenstein. But wiser you created a monster. And they, I mean, I love that song. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'll definitely go to bat for rhinestone. I Sly's at bats where he, he swung for the fences and hit maybe a double as opposed right. to, you know, swinging for the fences and like laying down a bunt. It's one of the few where his comedy actually lands, right? I thought so. When he's singing... Drinkenstein, the costume, the looks on his face. You've got Rocky and Rambo, but now you've got Nick Martinelli. I'm sorry, it works for me. I laugh, it's, it's hysterical. Him and Dolly, and the end. Come on, it's a Rocky fight at the end when he's in the disco outfit. Stay out of my bedroom. Don't be, so, I mean, I, I love this movie. Why oh, do you not like it? I, I thought we were talking about Over the Top, not Rhinestone. We, we were talking about the Over the Top, and then I took it to Rhinestone. I haven't seen I haven't seen Ryan Stone in quite some time, so I can't comment on it. I just know that I love a young Dolly. <laughs> sure. 
I think a lot of the success of that movie is dependent on Dolly and the interaction and the chemistry yeah. that they had together. Craig, would you say it's like when Stallone and Carl Weathers are choreographing a fight? If Carl Weathers doesn't sell the punch, Rocky looks ineffective, right? Absolutely. That's what I was thinking, yeah, yeah. We can't uh, discuss as a group rhinestone because somebody hasn't recalled it. What about Over the Top? I saw it last night. It was the first time in probably about... My wife rarely puts her phone down during a Stallone movie because she's seen them a hundred times. Right. So normally she plays Candy Crush. Oh. The other night we were watching Assassins for Slidecast and you know she had very little to say. But she didn't touch her phone for Over the Top. Over Is it that shot in Assassins that made you guys watch that? It, that's exactly it, Craig. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, when Miguel uh, Miguel Bain gets the contract from the Russian to kill Stallone, there's a picture that comes up, and it looks like it's the picture where Stallone is sitting on the back of the truck and over the top just after the funeral scene. And if mm. it's not that one, it's it's one of Stallone's publicity stills that he used because they're very similar. But anyways, that got us watching over the top. And I found it held up far better than Assassins did. Wow. Hot take. Yeah. I've yeah. always loved Over the Top. I know Ryan hated it when we covered it for our side project. Sorry. It's stupid and it's goofy. It's a freaking arm wrestling movie, but it's, I don't know, I love it. You know, that's nostalgia. And if you watch something yeah. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you're in a different headspace. And then, you know, when you watch it now and it's yeah. transported to the future. It's a DeLorean with Gigawatts. No doubt about it. Uh, it but no, seriously, because that's what music can do. Music can transport you back in time. It's amazing. The only thing I want to say, and then I, I really want to hear what Ryan has to say, because there's no wrong answer to this. I mean, I goof on people all the time. It's Rocky is a sports movie. It's a love story, whatever. The point is, is that it's so personal to everyone, as music or storytelling can be to anyone. I love hearing why someone likes or doesn't like it, and it's not a wrong or right or wrong answer. But in the opening of over the top when you hear Robin Zander's in this country my god it gets me going at the end when still like, and he's got to pull him over he's bleeding in the nose he shifts the way and you hear those strings of the opening of in this country I cry I mean I man cry uh -huh. I, I flex my arms and <laughs> <laughs> That's man crying, wife, yeah. It's man crying. But my wife teases me about it, but I did. I get a little emotional at the end. As we get older, we know what it was like in 1987, and now we've got all these life experiences. I'm 52 years old, and I look at it differently than I did then. Ryan, talk to me. What do you feel about Over the Top? It, it never connected with me even as a child, and I know when it came out, I was about the same age as The Sun in that film okay. I often have placed myself when I watch movies if I see a movie at a certain time in my life I'll place myself to the character that I closely resemble so for example I hate the movie E.T. because I saw that movie when I was 8 years old in the theaters oh okay <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Oh it's true. I, I hate E.T. The reason why is because when I, I saw this in the theaters in 1982, I was the same age as Elliot. I was eight years old. I couldn't fathom why any child would welcome a creature into your home with Reese's Pieces. And no kid in the right of mind would ever share the Reese's Pieces, let alone with an alien creature to bring it into your home. I couldn't relate with Elliot, and I couldn't relate with this kid and his relationship with his dad and the rig and everything. So it, it, never, it never connected with me. Okay. And the other thing... Arm wrestling as a sport, as a competition, it stresses me out. Yes, the idea of the impact on the arms and the stress that it puts on the joints. I don't like bones cracking or popping. And there's a scene in Over the Top, as you know, where it shows the guy, guy's arm break. Did you catch that? <laughs> <laughs> they kept that in the film. I forgot about that. I don't know if it's real. No, it's real. Prosthetic. They filmed parts of a real arm wrestling competition. I don't know if it was for the film or they were there because the film was being made, so they filmed some yeah. of that for the, the competition scenes. Yeah, a guy really dislocated his elbow, one of the competitors. So that's a real arm break. And so every time I watch them arm wrestle, it stresses me out. And the other thing that stresses me out is, this sounds terrible, or not terrible, or silly, is the idea that arm wrestlers just kind of focus on their one arm for working out. So you even got Sly there, or, the or yeah, he's, he's sitting there, you're like, ah, you know, working out my arm. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Several jokes you can make about this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I it just it never connected to me in the sense of when I was a kid it never connected with me and then when I became an adult and to see the movie as a movie I just I was like oh it's just it's a horrible for all the wrong reasons it's one of those movies where it's not quite enough to be a cheesy fun fest it's just I don't know but I had fun watching it don't don't get me wrong I had fun watching it Ryan 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 the world beats nobody halfway all right jeez here we go <laughs> okay let's talk about that scene for a second. I think that was the origins of it ain't about a hard you can hit speech, really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think so. He perfected it for Rocky Balboa. Yeah, it was a little clunky and and over the top, but he it seems he always has one of those monologues where he's trying to at home. No matter what his film is, it's like, oh, there's a little bit of a sly life monologue. He's like the Tony Robbins of action films. Have you ever seen Tony Everything. Robbins' head? His head is like, gigantic. It's like Frankenstein. Oh. <laughs> it's it, giant. It's, I swear to God, it's like a Ford Transit. It's, it's a massive head. <laughs> Speaking of Tony Robbins and sort of inspirational speakers, I had a conversation with Joey Casada, and we kind of just talked about Rocky and riffed on that for a while. He brought up a really good point about the character arc we get for Apollo from Rocky 1 to okay. Rocky 3. Apollo really would have had a great life as an inspirational speaker if he had chosen to go that direction after he retired. Mm-hmm. Joey really illustrated to me that if you watch Rocky 1, 2, and 3 as Apollo's story, you take something completely different away. It's pretty neat. I think that's interesting. I like that idea of being a, a speaker because a lot of people would do that, whether they're celebrities or sports stars. Apollo probably, much like being a fighter, would have been one of the greatest speakers because he's so colorful and animated when he speaks. Stay in school, use your brain, be a doctor, be a lawyer, carry a leather briefcase. The whole thing is, okay, those were Sly's words, but still, when Carl Weathers took it, Carl owned that. He just made it beautiful. Well, there's the scene where he yells at Rocky that there is no tomorrow. It seems like the whole, you know, stay in school, be a thinker, not a stinker was, was somewhat prepared. That whole there is no tomorrow speech is him just in the moment and emoting. Yeah both hit you in, in a different way but he nobody could deny what a great speaker apollo creed is yeah, yeah but i mean that yeah. journey that apollo takes is pretty remarkable I, I never thought about it before champ in part one and then by part three yeah. helping rocky get the eye of the tiger back yeah Bang your horns on side. <laughs> <laughs> even in rocky four the warrior might as well be dead speech too like that i mean that, that one hit too yeah it's huge it's huge you every know, time he speaks you, oh yeah 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 totally you got quint in Jaws, the Indianapolis speech. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest of all time speeches. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Star Wars fans remember when Obi-Wan breaks it down to Luke in the Millennium Falcon. And of course, Han Solo puts his quip in there. And the Godfather, take a stone and throw it in any direction, you had a great moment, a great speech. So, right. Yeah, yeah, James Earl Jones at the speech. beginning of Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> That's next on Slycast, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, we already did it. You just posted it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. right. So I just wanted to let those who are listening, those who are listening on YouTube, what have you, my apologies because I'm still new to this technology. The title's wrong. It says it's the Get Carter review again. I want to apologize for that. I had to convince myself it was it was really us because, you know, I, I know. Mike there and I was like, Mike didn't talk Get Carter with us. I do apologize. I can edit the title after the live stream so people might not join the live stream because they think we're going to be talking about Get <laughs> Again. <laughs> So I do apologize. This to the next level. This is why I have the the many listeners that we have. Professionalism like this, yeah. Can we keep talking about Rocky for a minute? And oh, this yeah. is kind of a discussion that we've had offline a little bit. I know me and Ryan and, and probably you as well, Mike. How do you feel about the treatment that Rocky has gotten on home video and what's in the vaults and when we might actually see it? So everybody I talked to, this came up in the feed over the last couple of days. People have I saw you with John well. Ripley talking about it, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is something that's kind of crushing to fans because we've fallen for every new painted cover. We've fallen for microscopic add-ons over the years. And it gets frustrating. So I believe everything from Rocky II forward is there in a vault somewhere. We know Rocky One doesn't exist, but... You guys, I assume you guys know this, Stan Shaw claims to have a copy of the Dipper scene with Rocky when Apollo comes in with the newscast. No, I didn't know that. I didn't they know got that. Stills, they got stills of it that still exist, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, the stills are out there. The stills are out there at the end of Rocky 
walking the through the empty footage. arena. So wait, so, so Stan Shaw has some footage of that? Why does he have it? That is an excellent question. What he said on Twitter several years ago was when they were burning, getting rid of the footage. They were getting rid of it. Nobody wanted it. Nobody back then thought about DVDs, behind-the-scenes crap, right? Nobody. So he took that footage because it wasn't in the movie. So he took it to keep for posterity. Do you think when he sees Sly, he says, Yo, Sly, I dig your lost footage, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. good. Don't encourage Uh, him, Mike. (laughs) Listen, he's just a ham and egg, right? Doesn't Ryan say that about 18 times a day? (laughs) That's funny. No, seriously. So he said that he has this. It's the only footage left. Hmm. And he was somewhat more interactive back then than he is today. I just tweeted, I said, I said could you rele- would you consider releasing it? And he goes, no, never. It'll never see the light of day. And I'm thinking, why would you do Why not go to Sly? Give it to him. Maybe Sly would pay him a couple dollars. I don't know. I mean, it's Stan mm-hmm. Shaw. And last time I remember seeing Stan Shaw, he was dying in the tunnel in daylight. So I don't know what Stan Shaw doing. He could probably use the money. My apologies. I thought it was a studio fire that wrecked that Rocky footage. They just burnt it on purpose? Back in the day, yes, that was. Well, that if was you don't have anywhere to normal, they, they would burn it because there was nowhere yeah. to store it. Yeah, nowadays everything is digitized. You've got it forever on a basically a 4K digital copy. Right. right? This I'm is drunk. like yeah. sort of that period right before they were starting to archive yeah. stuff digitally. It's a shame. Same like, thing happened with the Wizard of Oz. Right. If you went out to Go the on. dumpster at MGM the week they finished shooting, the yeah. lion. Stuff got thrown in the trash. You know, like crazy. Collectors went and grabbed it out of the trash. Yeah. There was a scene rumored with the lion humping the scarecrow. The lion had been in heat, and Bert Lahr was kind of going through some emotional things, and he actually had been humping Ray Bolger, the scarecrow. And there was a whole thing, but it was like a micro penis, so I don't know. Buddy <laughs> Epson had that footage. Uh, Yes, he did. He did. Uh, hey, Mike, I had a question about commentaries. Do you think that the commentary tracks are recorded and are, they're just sitting on them, or do they have to go back and do all that? I believe Sly went back to do all that because when he did the re-release of Rocky, when he was editing Balboa, he mm-hmm. makes several references. Right now we're editing Rocky Balboa. He probably had a cigar and a glass of brandy or whatever. And he says that. So he went back. Now... What do they normally do? I don't know, but Sly did go back. Now, I'm going to say something. This is not hidden information. This is pretty much out there. I think there's a bit of a divide between Sly and the studio. I think Sly may feel he wasn't treated as fairly as maybe he could have been. And maybe the studio has their side of it. It's not my fight. So maybe Sly isn't as aggressive in wanting to do that, but... But I think he would. I believe Sly would because he knows what it means to fans. Believe yeah, me, Sly knows totally. what it means. And it's not like he's trying to string us along because I don't think he would no. do that either. I mean, 45th like I, anniversary is coming up in like two years, so. Yeah, so I, I, I would almost. 45th or 50th? I was going to say 50th, Mike. I think 50th is such yeah. a monumental milestone. And again, you keep on this good, Mike, in the sense that. Sly doesn't have any control over this, so it really is a studio thing. And then it's more how much does Sly want to get in somebody's ear. And Sly's probably got a million other things yeah. that he's trying to move forward with that, you know, yeah. making sure we yeah. get to see some deleted scenes from Rocky Three. And it's not really high on his list of things to do. We've all seen that Rocky Two footage, Rocky's People, right? That was a CBS special in 79. I remember watching it with my father. That was an hour special. Now, we got the chunk of it online okay minus the commercial breaks why not add that for the millions that haven't why not add the rocky five we've all seen it with john candy janet jackson kurt russell okay they did all the things uh, troutman hosted the whole he goes to philadelphia the italian market not to mention a boatload of behind the scenes footage deleted scenes or whatever from what i understand the studio does not want to invest the money. That has been my understanding from some people that are somewhat in the know. That's amazing because, like you said, they've released – me and Doug each have different complete sets of Rocky through Balboa on Blu-ray. I've got the Undisputed yeah. collection and Doug's got the Heavyweight collection that came out within a couple of years of each other. So it's like right. they'll continually churn out the same product over and over and, then- and we buy it. What's yeah. different about it? You have the commentary tracks on that one, just for Rocky. Mm-hmm. 
right? Yeah. And it's what would they digitally remaster it again to make it look sharper? I don't know. Something. That article came out last year about, uh, I think it was Vanity Fair maybe or Variety or whatever, but Sly was very upset about not having held out longer. I didn't understand the, because he couldn't have gotten Rocky made yeah. if yeah. he didn't sell the property. So I didn't understand that exactly, but I know Sly feels very slighted. And unless they're going to pay him to do commentary, I think Sly would do it for free if it was anybody else. I know Sly would do it for free if it was anybody else. Wow. But for some reason, you know, there's that rub. There's that rub with the studio that they had done wrong to him. Well, maybe they did, you know, but I mean, it's a business, and I think Sly understands that, but I don't know. I, it kills me. I would spend $250 on a brand new multi DVD set of the Rocky series with updated extras. The studio could make the money back. I believe yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's all a nice shirt. Yeah, I was going to say, I just, hey. noticed, I just noticed that too. Yeah. Oh, that's. You see, that's what I call class. <laughs> I love that. Yes. If you want to have a good time, you need a good shirt. <laughs> exactly. I will take one for my niece, too. She's going to have a good time, you know? It's great. That's great. Doug, do you know anything about bricks? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Come on. Oh, 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 these are, these are good bricks. Brick layer. These are good bricks. My husband knows about bricks. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's an expert on bricks. What does that mean? I don't. I don't know. So Sly, when he wrote. Of course, these films, and when he writes stuff like that, like my husband knows a lot about bricks. Oh, nice bricks! These are nice bricks. D did he write that? Was that ad lib? Was that actually in the screenplay? They practiced that line. That's in the Rocky Two screenplay, the Rocky Two script that I saw. But here's something I asked Sly about this. A face to face, I said, "How do you decide some of the Rocky locations?" This was on Creed Two, the video that's at the end of the Pretender. During that forty-minute, forty-minute conversation, I asked him about that, <laughs> and he's got the hat on, and he's got the deep voice and everything. And he said, "Well, my mother was a numerologist. She said to him in the first Rocky, try to find addresses or buildings with a nine in the address, or that they add up to nine. Mm. Eighteen, eighteen. One and eight mm -hmm. is nine. One and eight is nine. Ninety-nine nine is eighteen. Circular." 2313 South Lambert Street is the Rocky Two house. So you almost add up to nine. That adds up, almost adds up to nine, right? <laughs> so I thought, okay. There was another address I had at the top of my head at the time. And I go, okay, Sly, but how about this one? And it was an address in Creed. And he takes a puff of the cigar, blows out the big cloud of smoke. He's got the Rocky hat on. He leans into me and he goes, I didn't pick the location. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. But it's like it was conspiratorial. It's like he didn't want to use that location. He might have had another one. But it's just the way he said it. Now, having said all that, I don't know if he was teasing me, if he was just having fun at my expense. I don't know if that's the real reason. That's what he told me there. And I love the story. It's a great story to tell. I just Thanks, don't know man. if it's accurate. When we were doing our coverage for Rocky Two on Rocky Minute, the hospital room where Adrian is is number 669. And it's really prominently displayed. So I, I looked into numerology and it's 669 is, you know, how 666 is the number of the beast. Sure, sure. Nine is considered like the angel number, the angel's number. Oh, is and, it really? Uh, reading into that like you know there's a reason because six is an inverse of nine if you flip it around there was a lot of like history about the yeah. nine and how it's i can't remember off the top of my head what it was i'd have to go back into my old notes maybe sly was right so numerology yeah if his, if he said his mom was a numerologist and there's Which something about the, i know she is if there's something about the number nine then yeah. i looked into it and there sure is oh it's awesome I, because because doug you know when you drive around those streets in kensington Every street looks mm -hmm. the freaking same. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, so you pick why, one. exactly, why was it 1818? Now, when we went, there's the big field where mm -hmm. it's all open across the street from Rocky's apartment. But during filming, it was like a canyon. There were warehouses all right there. And there were buildings across the street underneath the L. When you're looking down Rocky Street, you see those buildings. Right, so a lot right. of things have gone from that. So if maybe it was that canyon-like end-of-the-road existence in back of things that you don't see, maybe that's why Sly or John Avildsen chose that. I don't know. So many times Sly tells these great stories. I never know if he's teasing, if he's joking, 
or even myself. I know when I, I tell Rocky stories, I've told them six trillion times. And if I'm in like mixed company where nobody's that big of a Rocky fan and they're not paying attention to what I say, I just have fun with the story and I run a little because, you know, I say it all the time every day. For uh-huh. well, who knows? I don't know. Well, with a movie with a budget, they have location scouts. But obviously, since Rocky didn't yeah. have a budget, who was, was he scout locations or was JGA scout locations? Jay Derek had said this, and uh, also John Appleton had said this in several interviews, that he had gone to Philadelphia a few weeks ahead of time. I think with his kids, they went to drive around and look at locations because they did have to touch base with some people. We hear right. behind the scenes how they got out of the van, Sly, say your lines, get back in, we got to go because the police are chasing us. Well, that was true. <laughs> but they still went into 1818. They still went into the gym. They went into the pet shop. So they had to have some type of an agreement. There mm-hmm. had to be some pre They had to put the poster on the, the gym. I'm really good friends with Joe Marks, the guy that owned the pet shop. Okay? And I okay. talk to him fairly regularly. I'm going to ask him, what was that process like in 75? I don't know that he'll remember much of it, but I mean, he's getting a little older now, but he's, I'll tell you, the guy's like a, a Sherman tank, man. The guy's he's incredible. <laughs> I run into him every once in a while I'm doing tours because he lives around the corner. And oh, okay. he's always like, Mike, I have the turtles. I have Cup and Link. Come on over and see them. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of questions here oh. from our uh, chat. Dave Massey wants to know if... 1818 can be seen from Little Marie's house from Rocky Balboa. Sure. Is that the housing from yeah. across the bridge? It's yeah. across the field. That's where one of those tall buildings, a warehouse was in mm-hmm. Rocky 1, then it got torn down. That's where Rocky stands. Hey, Little Marie, who put all this stuff in your head because you just don't get there by yourself, you know? You can see that field in Rocky Balboa, and right yeah. across that is where 1818 was. Exactly. You can see so, the corner of 1818. Oh, yeah, the second floor to two white windows, correct. Craig is trying to talk, but oh. I just realized I'd been muted for like six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I thought you no, were miming. Right? I know, right? I was going to say, are the people that are in 1818 now, they're aware that they're in the Rocky apartment, right? Okay, so real quick, here's a guy, his name is Doug, that used to live there. Right up until March 15th, my last tour, there had been no movement in the house. Tour blinds hanging off. I haven't seen Doug in about three or four months. I don't know if he's still there. He was a lovely guy. I would always slip him a 20 every time I would come by because not that I owe him any money, but that neighborhood, sometimes if you're walking on the wrong side of the street, you're not going to be seen again. So it helps to have friends. If this guy, I always thought in my mind, if I could give him a 20 buck, whatever, and, and I, not every single time, but I give him something yeah. because we'd stand on a step, take pictures, whatever. He was very, very good about it. He goes, yeah, come on, come on up here. And he'd always have like a beer or something. I don't see him anymore. I don't know that anybody lives there, really. He yeah. was there for about two years. And then there was a okay. couple that lived there for about five years. And they invited me in the house. And that's where I watched Rocky inside Rocky's apartment with this couple who I just met wow. that day. <laughs> yeah, and they told me stories. They, they were telling me stories about how Japanese clients, businessmen, would come to the door and they would ask to buy the front door or the front shade. This is before the new doors and windows were put on. They had people from Wisconsin and Milwaukee. I don't know, sometimes it, it blends together in my head. They had people who wanted to buy the original screen door that Rocky hooked his arm through years ago. And when you hear these stories, you're like, holy Christ, that's amazing. It's like, this is how the world has been touched by Rocky. Was that- oh, yeah, uh, Mike Pulley, Michael Pulley there. He yeah, just, Mike he- Pulley, I know Mike. <laughs> Yo, Pulley, I'll call you back later. He uh, he said he's also wearing the uh, 1818 shirt, or he has that same shirt there, Doug. Uh, Dave also wanted to know, there's a bit in The Pretender where Mike got some of his stuff from somebody in Kensington, which wasn't good, or something like that. The guy where he breaks the bottles? No, uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. I, I'm not going to tell <laughs> Dave, and here's why. Because I want Dave to tune into Slycast in May when you post it, Craig, to hear this <laughs> unbelievable story. I will lead off about the story. There is the mothership, locust, and a tornado, and two <laughs> pregnancies. Oh, wow. Tune in, you'll hear all about it. Okay. And I was going to say, and it will be May, because one thing that this sort of pandemic has done is it's given me a lot of time to edit. The backlogs are gone. It's a good feeling. Putting Judge Dredd to bed was a... 
and then I found out there was an audio glitch, and I had to go back and <laughs> fix it and re-upload it. Judge you know, Dredd was your Everest, man. Goodness, but we're past it, so I'm looking forward to the Assassin's release. It was a lot of fun the other night, Mike. It was like oh, we never stopped. Great. You know, with Slycast, I listened to you guys before I came out as a guest host one time, and they never left. I'm like, bad fish. It never leaves the refrigerator. <laughs> um, How could we let you go, Mike? I don't know. I just know. I loved listening to you guys uh, years ago, and I thought, man, if I could just get out and just kind of chat with them one time, and that turned into being kind of like a little bromance. Because I see the guys on, and Ryan and Doug, you guys probably have this in your lives as well. We are the star of our own movie, some of us, literally. But in <laughs> our lives, there are some people who, some of us. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> None of ours have been people released, like, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> still in production. <laughs> My whole life movie is a deleted scene. <laughs> gonna get burned up yeah. in a fire yeah, yeah. <laughs> stan shaw has my life <laughs> I mean, stan shaw has it and he's just going through it he's holding up the film Ooh, ryan yo ryan i dig your life man <laughs> that is that's funny i see the guys the fellas on slycast as the background players in my movie my life you know, you go to work in the morning, you stop at the coffee stand, and you get a, you, you know the guy, hey, Joe, how are you? And then on your way, you see the guy who's the shoe shine guy or the flower salesman or whatever. These are all people you see every day, and you have a two-minute conversation with them. And it begins, you have a relationship with these people over time. It's like a work relationship or whatever. So, you know, Slycast, everything has changed so much in all of our lives, uh, especially when Craig moved out to Vegas and uh, when things in my life started taking over. You become so busy, what used to be an eight-hour workday is now a 16-hour workday. And the last thing we have is to talk more. At the end of the day, you've got to rest or you want to spend time with the people you love. And so getting back with Slycast just the other night, I absolutely loved it. And, and I can't wait to do it, do more. I mean, it's great. All right. Well, now we're done uh, plugging Slycast. We can move forward here. <laughs> and we actually have a good movie to talk about next. I, good, yes, we do. We do. I'm Finally. excited. It feels like it's been a while since we talked a good movie on Slidecast. Oh, jeez. I, I, I just wanted to give a nod to Sean Farrell, who contacted us on, uh, or contacted me on Twitter. Wanted okay. to know, are you a fan of the director's cut of Rocky Five or prefer the theatrical cut? Oh, good discussion. Sean's big on that. I've seen his questions on that. I don't always answer them because sometimes I just... I don't have the time or whatever. Can I give a shout out yeah. to Sean? Yeah, he's very active on all of our respective Twitter feeds. And I always wonder if that's Matt Marshawn <laughs> under a different handle because this guy is a fanatical and not in a bad way, but just really? his love of his love of the Rocky films is the same as Matt's yeah. love of the Rambo films. So Sean is extremely passionate regarding Rocky. So I just want to give out a shout out to him. He's very passionate about the Rocky Five director's cut. Like this is the thing that he wants to see What's your yeah. thoughts on that? Is it a better film? 100%. We see Rocky breaking down. I felt in the theatrical version, it was too much of, when I walk into a bar or so I go to a, like a, a house party or whatever, people know what I do. They come up to me, hey, Mike, hey, hey listen, I can do Rocky. Hello, Mike. How you doing? Bro? I think there was a little too much of that in Sly's take on the brain damage. This is why, if you ever see this, this is not a crit I'm not critiquing. I'm just saying I think there was just a little too much of that was edited. In the director's cut, if you want to call it that, there was less of that, and there hmm. was more of the brain breaking. We saw it. Rocky was talking to himself and the inanimate objects in the basement. It was really, really good. Now, does that make Rocky V a great movie? No. It's not a great movie. But the director's cut is, it would not be hated, I feel, by the fans to the level that it is. My argument with Rocky Five has always been that the quick treatment I would have given, and I hope Sly, he's listening, because he should have done this. He should have had the street fight be what it was, and it could have been shorter. And then they say, let's finish this in the ring. Like So whatever the result was on the street, the fight gets broken up, the cops come. Let's just say the cops come and say, hey, it's, this is a fight. Let's break this right. up. No charges are laid. And then the Rock is like, you know, Tommy can say, I thought you said your ring was outside and it's a noble finish. So we'll finish this in the ring, whatever. And they go to the ring and I can see this happening at the character of Rocky at the time. He would have just rolled right over Tommy. They're almost the same way that Rocky did in the second fight against Clubber. They remember that part in the street fight when he says, you and me, Tommy, we were supposed to be like this. 
Imagine if he said that in the ring with Tommy on the canvas. Yeah. That's a great scene. That's a great valid point. I don't disagree with that. And at all. and I think all the things that happened before, the you know, the him going a little bit full R word as you say, and a little bit too much here and there. I think if they had ended in the ring and the Rocky character saying, you know, me and you, Tom, are supposed to be like this, and he gives the winnings to charities, he he still stays in the neighborhood, still stays to his roots. Yeah. I don't think people would have left the theater thinking, Oh, that was a horrible movie. I think that it not ending in the ring really stung a lot of first time viewers. I've heard that. I disagree with it as a long-time viewer, but I agree with it from that very point of view. Sure, I get that. Craig, you're muted still. (laughs) Damn it. Done. Craig, your time's up. You spoke too much. We didn't hear it, but your time's up. Next. <laughs> I know. I don't want my dogs on the live broadcast interrupting things. But that brings up a good point because we all know that Rocky Five is supposed to take place directly after Rocky Four ends. Technically, it takes place in, what, 1986? Why didn't Stallone take Rocky into the ring? Was the perception that he was too old? So how old was don't Rocky forget. supposed to be? Early okay, 40s? So let's Let's try to go with that first, and then maybe we'll come to a little conclusion why Street Fight versus the Ring. How old was Rocky? So Rocky's 30 years old when he fights Apollo Creed for the first time, which is January 1st, 1976. Mm -hmm. He fights Apollo Creed Thanksgiving of 1976. Correct. But it comes out in 79. They film it in November of 78. Part two, yeah. Yeah, part two. But everybody thinks... Rocky II is 1979. Yeah, right. It's not. It's 1976. Yeah. So he beats Apollo. You have three years, right? Rocky three heavyweight championship fights. I have the Tiger spans three years. How I understand it. Ten it's, title defenses in three years. That sounds okay. Years. That's fair. Yeah. Even if we're slightly off on this, we're in a good ballpark. So if you go from 76, Rocky three is really 1979. However... Mickey's Gravestone. Yes, Mickey's Gravestone says 1981. Thank you very much. Somebody was in a hurry to write the movie. Uh (laughs) Okay, so, Sly, don't get mad. Just having a little fun at your expense. That's okay. You can leave me with the tab at dinner. (laughs) You have to watch what you say, Mike, but Sly will never contact us, so so we can let it fly. (laughs) You don't know that. You don't know that he won't contact you. Who knows? He may say this and say, I'm going to invite these three idiots to. Oh, see there. Mike can't even fantasize about it. He got cut off. Oh, we got a bit of a lag here. Stand by. No easy way out. There he is. He's back. He's back. So on the license plate, it does it say, is the sticker 84 or 85? Catch up in the last two minutes of your story because the stream is off my side of it. So I got disconnected. So what are you guys talking about? So Talking about the timeline. Okay. Yeah, the timeline. Three to four. So, so Rocky three. Really, Ryan, opens up in 1979. Eye of the Tiger, Rocky III, after Eye of the Tiger, it's 1979. But as Doug said on Mickey's gravestone... 1981. Yeah. 81. Right. So you know, discrepancy here. Here's where the problem is. Rocky comes home at the beginning of Rocky IV. It looks <laughs> like he had just been in the fight with Apollo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Apollo gave him that hat. That's the big be. problem. Yeah. To me, it's Canon 79. Even though it says Mickey 81, you can't divorce. Hey, Dad, who punched you in the eye? The same friend. That's weird, Dad. The only thing we don't see is the time frame from the second Rocky Clubber Lang fight to the third fight with Apollo Creed. That Maybe that could be three, four years down the road. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you're reaching, pal. Uh, Handsome guy, I gotta give it to you. I love Sly. It's almost like he always wanted sequels and he got his sequels, but he was incapable of just doing little placards saying, yeah, five years later, six months later, two years later. Easy corrections. In all fairness, Ryan, we're in an age of sequels. In this day and age, every movie gets a sequel. If you think about it, when Rocky came out, there weren't many sequels. You had The Godfather Part Two. Still, I don't think people knew the rules of sequels. And, mm, you know, yeah, like, look yeah. at Back to the Future. Back to the Future's biggest problem is Back to the Two tried to pick up directly where they left things off in Back to the Future. It <laughs> could have been one line. And they didn't have the end of Back to the Future for their sequel. The biggest one, of course, is the time jump of Rocky's son from four to five. That would have been an easy fix. He could have landed at the airport and done the press conference without his family. Maybe just Adrian's there and the kid's home with the care, whatever it is. And then the next scene just says five years later. 
and then yeah, they lose their money. Why couldn't you just wait to, where's the kid? I don't see the kid. Well, like, just eliminate that whole scene, do the press conference, and then go five years later. I can't disagree. If I'm going to play devil's advocate, I could argue it, because I'm kind of with you on that. But there's a greater reason why we should boycott that particular scene, and for the same reason in Rocky Three. But in Rocky Three, when the high school band is playing Gonna Fly Now, why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Why are they playing Gonna Fly Now? Yeah, it'd be like Mike Tyson having his own theme song somehow that he has played. Somehow he has a theme song. Playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Right. So follow my logic now. Why are they playing I, uh, Gonna Fly Now? I, I don't know, because we heard that in the theater as a movie-going audience. Not Rocky. It wasn't source material, Rocky yeah. Five. Did you catch one of the drums, said Mr. T? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Mm-hmm. T has it signed on right there. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> in the second fight, you can see Mr. T's director chair in the side, in the back of the ring corner. That's crazy. That's crazy. In Rocky Five. When they get off the plane from Russia, the plane going to fly now again at the airport tarmac. Why? This has bugged me for 20 plus years. I now have come up with a scenario that is canon, that is actually grounded in some truth. Right after Rocky fights Spider Rico, he's yep. walking down the street, bouncing the ball, and he's whistling. Yes, What's sir. he whistling? Going to fly now. Yeah. The whole version yeah. of going to fly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So... Here's my thinking. Mm-hmm. It's been established this song exists somewhere. In that universe. I, exactly. After Rocky becomes champ, Sports Illustrated interviews him. And they say, hey, Rock, everybody wants to know, when you're out there running through the streets of Philly early in the morning, what goes through your head? Well, you know, you know when I was a kid, I heard this song, and it plays in my mind all the time. And maybe this is a real song, and he announces it. The interview goes across the world. Everybody reads this interview. And the band leader, who's going to be at the steps to uh, help sing along with the statue, he says, oh, this is Rocky's favorite song. I'm going to teach it to my high school band, and we're going to play it. That is how I... That's an incredible stretch, and, and I'll allow it. My question is, why in Tank... Not tang- a stretch. Okay. In, uh- <laughs> hey, it's a song, Rocky Whistle. Okay. Yeah. How's that a stretch? Okay, 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 okay. So my question is, in the world of Tango and Cash... When the cop says, who does he think he is, Rambo? Now, so in this sense, they have seen, the characters of this movie have seen the movie Rambo, and they literally have an individual who is a pretty spitting image of Sylvester Sloan starring in the film Rambo, who this cop thinks he might be Rambo because he happens to look like a doppelganger of Sylvester Sloan in the, in the world of Tango and Cash. Anyways, this is... He's got glasses on. Rambo no, doesn't wear glasses, world, he... Ryan. <laughs> Come on, it's the Superman rule. Right. Craig, take him to school, Craig. Oh. Take him to school. <laughs> didn't have Rambo's glorious mane either. All right, let me, uh, let's go Rambo for a minute here. Yeah, I please. I ask you guys something. Please, anywhere, anywhere you want to go. Business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> yeah. I know the mullet. He's bounding down. Kenny you know Powers. Is. Kenny Powers. Powers. That's a mullet. Mm-hmm. Rambo, I never thought Rambo had a mullet. He just had long hair. But yeah, yeah. everybody on social media says it's the Rambo mullet. Rambo 3, you can kind of argue it's entering mullet territory because the bangs are okay. short. Right. In the other okay. movies, he's got sort of that Farrah Fawcett. It's hard yeah. to get your bangs as long as everything else. I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You worked on that, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I used to have long hair all around, man. It was a party oh, everywhere. did you really? <laughs> yes. I'll no see if I can what? dig up a picture. Yeah. I, I would love to see that. Now, another question I have this is my top five questions I want to ask Sly. Why did he go with light brown hair for First Blood? And then how did it get black for Rambo 3? Oh, hair dye. No, but <laughs> oh. Rambo's not sitting there with the, e- you know, saying, the easy... Uh... Yeah, what's the process? What was Sly's process? Because every movie, his hair is always a different thing for the character. Uh, his body is somewhat tweaked in a great variety of the movies. So why go light? It's the only movie he went light. Got light brown. Do you guys ever have a scenario? Maybe you think about why he did that. We have to transport ourselves to First Blood and probably pre-production and where Sly was in his career. He wasn't superstar Sylvester Stallone yet. Right. As far as he knew, Rambo might have been his next opportunity to create something and to help build his career. Okay. I could almost argue that it was more of a visual change to sort of 
have people not think of him as Rocky as much. Separate, okay. reinvent themselves. And to, in addition to the long hair, having a different color could really help just say, hey, this is a new, different thing. Okay. This is Sly in 1980 or 81, whenever they filmed that movie. Yeah, that's I as mean, good that's... a reason as I've ever heard. What's your ranking of the Rambo films? First Blood, uh, Rambo 2, Rambo 4, Rambo 3, and way around the corner, <laughs> down around Florida, get on a boat, go out to the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> is Last Blood. You know, Mike, I'm not too far off with you. I would go First Blood, I would go John Rambo Part 4, then I would go Rambo 2, then Rambo 3, and then off down in Cuba, Last Blood. I don't disagree. Which we did reference on Assassins the other night, that both versions, at least here in the States, of Last Blood are available on Amazon Prime. So you got the theatrical cut, and then I think what they're calling the extended cut, which is actually the... Mm -hmm the cut the rest of the world got with the monsoon yeah. at the beginning. Both of those versions are in Amazon Prime if for whatever reason you want to watch that movie again. Yeah, I may. I have a replica of the Statue of Liberty, 12-inch re replica. I may shove that in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> my ranking would be identical to Craig's. Okay, cool. I, I really like the fourth one. Whatever you want first, to call yeah. it. Rambo, John first Rambo. First Blood and John yeah. Rambo work mm. so well together. You don't need to yeah. see any of the other Rambo movies. You can watch Agreed. First Blood Mm -hmm. Go have lunch and come back and watch Rambo, and you get like a you complete it right up, yeah. and you get a complete story too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah true bookends. Rambo was such a perfect, perfect, perfect little bow for that yeah. character, and that's what mm -hmm. makes Last Blood even more of a disappointment. But let's hear yeah. Ryan's thoughts. Oh, oh yeah, Last Blood. <laughs> well, no, I do actually, and I'll t I'll say this. Look, I like Rocky Five. I'm not one of those people that hates Rocky. I hate it when people that hate a film just because it's ranked last, if that makes sense. So I love all the Rocky films for different reasons, uh, but there's obviously a ranking system. So the same with Rambo. I like all the Rambo films because I like the Rambo character. To me, it's just it's fun watching Sly do these films. But that being said, Rambo Four is my least favorite Rambo film. Wow. Why? I went into Rambo 5 with no expectations. And I guess sometimes it's, things are tempered by your expectations. So I went into part 5 with zero expectations. Think, okay, sure, he's doing a Rambo film. He's got short hair. I've heard it's a revenge taken flick mixed with Home Alone. Whatever. And it was. And it was fun. It was violent. It was great. And look, we've seen Sly do much worse. And I'm like, this was a fine movie. And in, that being said, yes, yeah, so there's a lot, a lot left wanting. This wait. Wow. Just, just wait. No, now listen, Rambo 4, the reason why I left that film, so when I saw that film, I left that film wanting. This is against Sly, no offense to the, to the big man. I feel like he just leaves so much on the cutting room floor, so much imagination and creativity that could have been done because he's it's in his system. We know that he can do this. So the 50 Cal fight, that should have been the second act, not the final act. That should have been the mid-battle fight. And then the main leader guy, he, remember he takes off and the Rambo character slices him up in the forest and it's in the movie. And it's an hour and 20 minute film. That's it. Why didn't they say, hey, let's have one last mission with the survivors of this the 50 cal fight. And they, then they do a, like a enter the base type, more stealthy, you know, hand to hand combat type mission. Right. Such you know a high, high though. That caliber fight. It's amazing. Is Yes, but it's over in an hour and 20 minutes. I thought Rocky Four was short, and this was so too, it was too short. Is, you guys probably either know this or you forgot you heard it. Nobody wanted Rocky Balboa made. Rocky Balboa became a Rocky story, and it was beautiful. Stallone proved himself. Didn't get paid one dime for it. Not one dime he didn't get paid. Ryan, had, he put up, and I'm so glad he did this fairly recently, he gave Antonio Tarver's side, which I think it's all bullshit anyways, but so I'm so glad... That, Tarver's side is out there. But a similar thing happens to Stallone during Rambo. They think, all right, you got Rocky Sly or Rocky Balboa. All right, come on, Rambo, you got to bring it in. You got to bring it in a short, fast, quick movie. Why do I got to do that? Well, because movie time's in the theaters. You got to put as many movies showing for so day for theater yeah. to recoup your money. It was all about money, Ryan. That's all that was. If it was up to Sly, he would have made it longer. I know that for a fact. Okay. All right. Well, that, I'm just saying as a fan of his in the in the franchise, I left wanting more. I never felt that way with other films. Rambo 5, I never wanted more. Even all the other films. I didn't, I didn't leave thinking, oh, I wish to get... Rocky 4 ended yeah. up with, like, that's it? It's over? I actually looked at my watch in the theaters, and I remember thinking, wow, that was too fast. Yeah. So here is, gotcha. here is right. my biggest problem with Last Blood. 
one thing I've always commended Sly on with Rocky and Rambo is when you take a long time between sequels, you see the passage of time. It's not like Han Solo walking in and he's got the same clothes on or Indiana Jones and Crystal Skull. He's the same exact person. In Rocky and Rambo, Balboa and Rambo 4, you can see that that character has gone through changes. Time mm-hmm. has affected him. That's good. Yeah, I like yeah, that. I guess you could argue that for Last Blood. But for me, there's a character betrayal in Last Blood. And we could dissect that movie. I'm tr- we'll, we'll dissect it eventually on Slycast. Yeah, yeah. But the scene where Rambo goes to Mexico to get his niece back, mm. he confronts, what, 25 or 30 Mexican cartel members. That, to me, it doesn't even look like anything that Rambo would do. Rambo would be stealth. And that confrontation, from a storytelling standpoint, it gets Rambo on the brink of death and drives the rest of the movie. But to me, that is a character betrayal. Now, I don't know if you feel the same way, Mike or Ryan, but... I do. I do. And that was my biggest thing is, as a Salai movie, Last Blood works perfectly. Sure. As a Rambo movie, it fails. Yeah. A lot of people in the Rambo universe feel that exact same way because Rambo is this great tactician. This has been time and time and time again in the movie. He doesn't go, he doesn't leave with his emotions. He always has a way out, right? Right, always has a back door. Now, what I suppose, and I will give this ground, could be argued, is that Rambo has come full circle, and John Rambo, okay, the, the fourth one, He's now integrated back into society. He's come back to this ranch. These children, the the caretakers, they've given him a new lease on life. So he put the bastard Rambo to bed, like Rocky puts the beast to bed. And it's because of this young girl and the the caretakers and so on. So I suppose there's a sliver of light where I can say, okay, Rambo became more emotional than he had ever been. The only time we saw him somewhat emotional was with Cobile. That's the only time we saw him marginally emotional. So maybe that was it, but Craig, coming full circle to what you're saying, maybe they shouldn't have done it. Maybe they should have came at it a different way. My brother put it all in perspective for me. My brother is the Rambo in the family. He's a Rambo nut. And he goes, Mike, it's 2019. All right. First Blood came out in 82. He goes, or 81, whatever it was. He goes, we have another Rambo. We have a yeah. fifth Rambo. Celebrate and that. I said, you know what? You know what? You're right. I, <laughs> I'm going to sit back. I loved. I didn't care for the flood opening. I didn't care for that. No. I, I, Matt, Matt I loves it. Matt loves it. He went on and on about that. Yeah. Uh, Matt's biased. Matt's, Matt's a, little, a little biased, if we're being honest. I like Matt. He's a nice guy and all that, but he's biased. I have to take off in about Oh, yeah, minutes. that's right. Okay. I have one thing that I wanted to say about Rambo that I was hoping when I heard that this was coming out, and I still kind of wish to this day, was that Rambo as a character is, you know, suffering deep from the mental scars that he got in Vietnam. And we saw him over the course of four movies before Last Blood came out see him keep getting brought back to that. So he was never really yeah. ever able to escape his PTSD. It was never treated. Yeah. And it just like got him, in my opinion, deeper and deeper into like the dark place where Rambo lived. Right. Yeah. And right. I felt the only way for him to heal is by dying. I thought he deserved yeah. a hero send off at the end of last blood. Yeah. And I think that's what disappointed me so much was that guy, he's so tortured and tormented yeah that he needed to die to finally get peace. Until we get another Rambo movie, you can't see <laughs> Rambo dying on that rocking chair. Who leaves it up to interpretation? Yeah, I, can, he died. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Uh, Sly, but... Sly canceled interpretation. A couple weeks ago when he was answering questions, mm-hmm. he was asked, does Rambo live? And he goes, yes, Rambo gets on the horse, rides off into an Indian reservation, oh, okay. and heals himself. Well, I mean, that's because Sly wants to eventually make another Rambo movie. He's not going to turn well, down money to make another Rambo he, movie. That's his problem is he can't put his character <laughs> to bed. He can't just let him go. This Don't, with this you want to tell him that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell him that. No, yeah, you know really not. Could you imagine? We have such love for the, these characters and for Stallone himself. I really hope if he sees this, 
this is just fan talking in general. We're not slamming the guy. We love him. We love his work. We do. I love the first. We two devote podcasts to him. Mike, you make your living. <laughs> My living is devoted to what this man has done. Jesus. And there's three him. three set podcasts right here representing yeah. his work. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's mm-hmm. really where the bread. Look butter at this guy behind me. Of, John yeah. Rivoli has developed a beautiful art career yeah. off of uh, Rocky and his Heck skills yeah. to get into art to do other ventures. The spinoff from what Stallone's done is amazing. Doug, you got to go? It's been a pleasure, you fellas. Oh, man. I wish I could stay on, but I, I got a ton of things to do today. Yeah, our next topic was Party of Kitty and Studs, so you'll be missing that conversation. Oh, cool. <laughs> 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 All right, fellas. Thanks again, man. All I'll, right, I'll talk to you guys real later, soon. Later. later. All right, Doug. Now, Mike, you were talking about the Last Blood, and you weren't a big fan of the monsoon scene. Were, were you going somewhere with that? Here is what I loved i love the first two minutes there are three things i love number one the trailer set to old town road hmm. i want to take my house holy crap did i love that song billy ray cyrus i thought his part that they used for the trailer i was hooked man i friggin love that i love the first two minutes of the american version of rambo with the horses on the farm loved it loved it then the rest of the movie happened and i was like okay and then the last 15 minutes i love the over the top of the last 15 minutes i love the plunging of the heart stopper and ripping the heart out i love the arrows through the shoulder on the barn door love 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 doug hit on something so good i wanted more the ptsd there was a microsecond flash of ptsd this is Rambo's core that has driven him. What happened to that in the trailer? My past has caught up with me. The sheriff coming back? What's happening? I don't put the blame on Sly, not because I love the guy. I put the blame on the director. That's where I put the blame. I have to imagine Sly would have gone to a much more expanded way. I don't want to go down a, a really controversial road here and potentially have us say things that either shouldn't be said or couldn't be said. There was a point where Sly was working with David Morrell on a concept for what mm, became Last I Blood, know. and David Morrell was removed from that project. Do you think when that occurred that Sly, from a creative standpoint, detached as well? I think studios can be very bad entities. I do like your take, Mike. It's the director's responsibility to say something's not working. I understand Ryan's point uh, about it. Greg Troyan, who is a big Stallone fan, he does a, a podcast called The Lipstick Panel. Really interesting podcast, by the way, if you haven't listened. Every episode, they rank something, and it's a very scientific ranking. Oh, okay. Um, even though sometimes that science doesn't work because their number one Rocky movie is Rocky IV. <laughs> I think Greg's his favorite Rambo movie is Last Blood. I mean, I okay. understand the appreciation for the film. As a Stallone movie, it worked perfect. Yeah. If you name that character mm. Joe Smith, all on board with it. Yeah. But it's that character betrayal. But Mike, you saying that it's the director's responsibility to say, Sly, Rambo wouldn't do this. That's probably what made Creed so good, right? Is Coogler. Yeah. Coogler knew and loved that character, right? Loved, loved, loved. I had a five-minute conversation with him, and I had like maybe a six-minute conversation with Jordan. I didn't know that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. On First Creed, I was there every day, 16-hour days, watching from just off scene. And I remember Coogler has said he so loved Rocky too. The last thing he was going to do is going to embarrass or run away from the franchise. He's going to make it his own. He's going to make a Creed his own thing but he needed to bridge that gap. And that's what I think they did in Creed so beautifully was bridge that gap. Michael Jordan said he had such deep love for the character of Rocky that if he couldn't do justice to the project, it was gonna walk away from him, he wasn't gonna do it. So Sly, we all know he turned Coogler down three years in a row or something like that. Yeah. And it wasn't until Jennifer tells Sly, you know, don't be afraid. You're an actor, you have to show yourself being sick. Well, maybe I could take a friend to the hospital. No, no, Rocky has to have cancer. That's got to be it. And I read an early synopsis of Creed before we got the movie we got. The original opening was going to have Rocky in the wintertime going into a bookstore in one of the side streets in Philadelphia, perusing the shelves because he gets better at reading. 
and oh, he starts right. to feel this cramping and he starts to feel a little sick, which was going to be a slow build to the cancer. So I thought that would have been interesting to open with Rocky walking out of a bookstore in Philly. Of course, it would have been good for the tour, too, because it would have been another <laughs> location. Yeah, I understand the storytelling reason for getting Pauly out of the picture and having Pauly die between Balboa and Creed. There's no room in Creed for Pauly. He would have been a None. distraction. But there could have been some way that we get a flashback or something where we get to see those final moments between Pauly and Rocky. Because I would like to think that Rocky sure. was there for Pauly at the end. Yeah, no doubt about it. I agree 100%. I wish they did. I think not so much Burt Young, but Burt Young, but more the character. Paulie Panino deserved a bit of a send-off. Yeah. Rocco, you're going to do okay. How do you know that? The stuff in the basement. Yeah. yeah, yeah Paulie deserved a send-off. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is, as Rocky would say. And to build on that point, the Spider Rico scene. The eulogy Rocky gives for Spider Rico. Hello? Are you kidding me? Jesus, that should have been in there. Yeah. yeah. Now, Ryan, you've committed to covering the Creed movies, right? Yes, that's affirmative. We have these conversations to look forward to, Mike, because I know Ryan yeah. is going to dissect the Creed movie with the expert precision that he's dissected <laughs> all the other movies. I don't know if you're throwing shine at my face, expert precision. I don't know what expert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, before I even knew you, I talked about what a great podcast you had and the approach you guys took. It's so funny that we've got Doug who's doing Rocky Minute, which is a microscopic look at every minute of Rocky, and then you guys on Going the Distance, which is sort of yeah. taking chunks and sections of the movies and really giving them a deep analysis. And it's funny because on Slycast, you know, Rocky 1 and 2, we covered on one episode. Yeah. And you've yeah. devoted multiple, multiple, multiple episodes to each movie. Oh, I appreciate so, that. No, I no, appreciate I, that. Seriously, I mean, if anybody wants a, a you know a real good look at and an analysis of those movies, so I'm really looking yeah. forward to see your Creed, and I'm glad you guys are doing it because I know there's that whole debate on whether or not Creed and Creed Two are Rocky movies. You know what Sly has talked about maybe making another Rocky movie, and then that would be Rocky Seven. It would have to be. But yeah. People call Creed one and two Rocky seven and eight. So because they don't know what else to call it, because Rocky is the star of those films. My question to you guys to discuss is again, Mr. Stallone, if you're listening, take no offense when I ask this question because this is me speaking as a fan of him. Is how frustrating and why did this happen that he just didn't pick the right roles for so long when other actors did it was a they weren't offered to him did he just not see he's not a dumb guy like he's a smart individual so what what happened from like 1993 until rocky balboa minus copland there was nothing yeah well and i think copland is the missing puzzle piece there because it was a deal he did with miramax pictures and harvey and bob weinstein and we all know that harvey weinstein's now in prison i really believe and Hopefully, this story comes out at some point. Harvey Weinstein's a very powerful guy. I think, and this is all just personal opinion, based on my perception, and what I remember in 97 when Copland came out, though, is that Sly was supposed to make a lot more movies for Miramax that he never made. Something happened there, and I really think that Harvey Weinstein put a little bit of a, you know... A screw. Yeah, into into Stallone's career because I think he had momentum after Copland. It's a real shame because we could have gotten some great work when Sly was still sort of in the his prime in terms of yeah. not to take away from what he did in Creed. He got nominated for an Oscar for it. Uh, there's a sequence in Get Carter that I talked about uh, that I love because he's 54, Sly, in the Get Carter film. There's a scene in the elevator where he's fighting those two guys in the elevator and there's a their overshot scene of him just literally boot kicking the guy. Yeah. That scene was so amazing, but at the same time, it frustrated me because I was like, we could have had a freaking Goodfellas Stallone film. Why didn't we ever have full-on, balls-to-the-wall, I'm-a-bad-boy, mafia-enforcer, Goodfellas-type, mobster-film character? I so badly wanted to see and wish we had seen in the in his 50s, like that Robert De Niro, Cape Fear, badass. Sly can snarl. He can be angry. He can be mean. The amoral character, I just, why didn't we ever see it? And he's 74. You know why? Yeah. I get it, but also I don't share it. Okay. Because Mike happened. really likes Driven. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's what I mean. Okay, go on. Tell, tell me the you reason know, why. You know, 
do you know how Joe Pesci in Home Alone? Sick of fucking, sick of fucking. <laughs> yeah, that's Driven. Okay, <laughs> Driven sucked. I hated Driven. Sly was good in Driven. The movie sucked. Yeah, yeah, okay. fair, yeah. Here's the reason. For decades, Sly is a mobaholic. Sly wanted desperately to do mob movies. Okay. He came to the realization no one was going to give it to him. No one was going to put money on him because he couldn't get away from Rocky and Rambo. Oh, look, it's Don Rocky. Oh, look, it's Rambo killing someone. Nobody was going to believe him for a millisecond as a mob guy. The closest he got was Snaps Provolone. That's it. This is Sly telling us this. Okay. That's it. Same reason Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. This is Sly's baby years before Rocky. Dream Project, yeah. Dream Project. If anyone is going to get a Dream Project made at any point in their career, it would have been Sylvester Stallone. Nobody, no one has done anything with Sly for this. Why? Can I push back on that? Oh, yeah, please. Sly's worth... If what I read on the internet is correct, anywhere between four to five hundred million dollars. That's what he's net worth. That's a lot of money to me, and he's had a lot of money for many years. Maybe this is a question for all celebrities because I'm not a celebrity. I'm not an artist. If I liked a project enough, and I know some actually, to be fair, some celebrities do do this. They will do their passion projects knowing full well this is not going to make money. This is not going to warrant a sequel. This is not going to get awards even. But I'm going to do an independent film because this is something that's on my project. This is something I want to do, and I'm going to do it. I just wonder why Sly never said, I'm going to spend a million to two million of my own. You know, He's created his own production company now. I wish he did this 25 years ago. Why didn't he just say, you know what, I'm going to make a film. I know it's not going to make any money, but I want to play that mafia hitman guy. I'm just going to do it for fun, a million dollar budget, whatever. I've got a theory there, Ryan, is one thing we, we know and love about Sly is when he wants to do something and he's invested in it, You can't beat the results. You can't. And so I think that's part of the problem. To do that dream project, he probably knows what he would need to invest, the amount of time, the amount of money, the amount of energy to get no return. I could just see that not being as viable at that point. Because I don't think anybody, maybe Tom Cruise, when they give a shit, delivers more. Yeah, Tom Cruise is hard to beat for energy on screen. Uh, no, yeah, seriously, yeah. I mean, no, it's true. Say what you want about Tom Cruise from a personal standpoint. Every movie you watch, you can see that he gives a, a shit. Yeah, he's a professional. He's a, he's, right. a, he's a professional. Right. You know, agree. And I agree. You know, Bruce, I agree. You can't say that about Bruce Willis. You can't say that about Nick Cage. But I would say pound for pound. Stallone, when he's there and he's invested and he gives a shit, you can't beat the result. Okay, we got a couple of things from the chat here. I want to make sure we thank everyone that's chatting. Right. With, we've got yeah. Jim Toscano, of course, from the Pretender film. He wants to know what is Stallone's relationship with the Cannon Brothers? The Cannon Brothers from the eighties? Probably the the Cannon Film Company. Like Cannon Films. Tell Jim to stop drinking. Okay. Jim, <laughs> put the bottle down, Jim. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, maybe you'll have to elaborate. I mean, what else we got here? Uh, people were just reminding us that Stallone, of course, played the film Fist. Ma- Call back, Labor Leader Union. Yeah. yeah, and Dave Massey just reminded us that, yeah, typecasting's a bitch is basically what he was saying. Yeah. Why do you think Adam West had no other success except Family Guy? Couldn't get out of that role of Batman. You think he got a lot of royalties as Batman? I do not. Clayton Moore was one of my first heroes. You guys know who Clayton Moore is? Yeah. The Lone Ranger. Unbelievable. He could do nothing with a career after that. He was the Lone Ranger. He had that voice like Sean Connery. You knew the Lone Ranger voice. How cool do you think it would be to see Stallone in the Quentin Tarantino film? 100% love it. Yeah. And I think he could do it. Did you ever see Stallone play the special needs salesman on Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Yes. With My Bell? all-time favorite fly mm-hmm. SNL it's sketch. It's a pretty Julius. Orange Julius, I did. I, are you kidding me? That is some of Sly's best acting ever. Best. I have not seen him. Rocky, Fist, Paradise Alley, Copland, Orange Julius Clerk. Brilliant. Brilliant. He does have on the docket here the film Little America. Apparently, it's in production. So he's got four films in production right now: Little America, Hunter, that long in development hunter film the one that was supposed to be a rambo movie yes expendables part four and of course he is filming right now is the samaritan so samaritan is going to be epic i think if it's done right 
it is one of my favorite concepts Sly has going. Little America, I don't know much about it. Is it apocalyptic of some sort? I don't know. In a dystopian future where China owns America, a former American Force Recon member is hired by a Chinese billionaire to go to an American ghetto and find his daughter. So it sounds like Escape Plan 2. Escape Plan 2. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Escape Plan 2 meets Rambo 5. Now, Hunter, 10 years ago, would have been freaking epic if yeah. Sly did that. Yeah. We talked about that Hunter. right after Rambo. He was going to make Hunter. Yeah. And why didn't he make Hunter? He was going to bring the creature into Rambo universe. Dumb move. Why doesn't James Bond just chase down Dracula? That would not have worked. And he got the feedback. He even oh, noted, that- okay, I see what you're saying. We're not going to do that. I had several conversations with James Byron Huggins about Hunter. I can tell you, Hunter is something that would seriously work. I think it would be one of the best projects Sly could ever do. Is he going to do it? I don't know. I don't think he is. There's that fan part of me that I feel like there was like 20 years. I think the age of like 50 or 48 to 65, minus the Rambo and Rocky film, where there was a lot of that Silver Fox years that we could have just had the Mafia films. Well, that the- Ryan, to your point, in the 80s, they couldn't get a movie for Arnold and Sly. Sly and Arnold both said they never got a script. Nobody wrote a script mm, that's too bad. that would work. Yeah. It was the 80s. Everything worked in the 80s. Right. Weekend the Bernie's, a dead guy. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. That worked. It has a sequel. <laughs> that's the frustrating thing because let's say yeah. me, you, Ryan, and Doug all went out and bought a case of beer and just stayed mm. online with each other for the entire weekend. How many awesome concepts and scripts could we come up with for a million? For Sly? A yeah. Million. yeah, I mean, that's the frustrating thing about yeah. it is it's not that hard. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and people get paid millions of dollars to come up with bad ideas. It's weird. And Arnold said, Arnold was asked. I saw the interview. Arnold was asked, you know, was it money? And he goes, no. He goes, Sly and I would have worked something out money wise. He goes, it wasn't the money. He goes, it wasn't the antagonistic relationship they had back then. There was no script. I find that. Unbelievable. In their mm-hmm. prime, there was nothing. I don't get that. Now, I like their scenes in the first escape plan. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I thought Arnold came out on top in that. I thought he was better in yeah. escape plan. We talked about that in our review. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Rocky Seven, do we want Sly to do this? No. Why? I can't say. Okay. All right. Well, Sorry. I could give my opinion. Sure. Okay. I'm all about closure for characters just like i said rambo gave such a good send-off to that character we got the perfect send-off for the rocky balboa character at the end of creed 2 mm-hmm. he reconnects with his son and he meets his grandson end of story we don't need to see the rest of rocky's life that's fine i agree Okay. When Creed was announced in 2013 or 14 or whatever, I was legitimately like, oof. As much as I love Rocky and I love Sly, I'm like, Sly, come on. You're kind of, you're dipping too much in this well and I'm embarrassed. I'm getting embarrassed now to be your fan, you know? Yep. And I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I was proven wrong and that just made me love him more because I was like, oh, he can do it. He can still just do this. And that's amazing. Yep. Creed 2, I was actually not as stressed out about and I just thought, oh, why not? Sure, here we go. Especially when I heard it was a sequel to Rocky 4. I was like, you yeah, know, sure, this is interesting. The behind the scenes stuff of Creed Part 2 kind of put me... Uh, it made me a little bit sour and my love for Sly because yeah. uh, he's been a childhood hero of me well I mean a hero of me since my childhood uh, on the film I want him to kind of take back the character and end it on a Rocky placard I want him to say this is my character it was a lot of fun doing those creative films but guess what I'm calling the shots I'm writing the script and I'm going to bow out my own with Rocky 7 and so and I want him to call it Rocky 7 to kind of say oh there's some creative films that's cute I can't argue with either one of you I am split in the middle half of me is with Craig half of me is with Ryan but couldn't you argue yeah. Ryan that Rocky Balboa gave you that ending Especially if you're not going to consider Creed and Creed 2. Rocky Balboa did exactly what it needed for that character. I agree it did, but the can got opened again with the Creed film. So now I'm not happy with the Rocky Balboa ending, if that makes sense. Meaning, I've seen Rocky's life continue. So Ryan, you want him to connect with an undocumented homeless boxer and take him to the top. Yes. That's what you want to see. 
Sure. Noted. I want to see Rocky in every movie that is going to go forward until the day Sly dies. I want Rocky buying a hot dog at a vendor. Sure. Uh, just like I want to see Napoleon Dynamite in line at a bookstore somewhere. I think Rocky should be in every movie because the character is beloved and he brings such positive energy. I don't want anything to tarnish the beauty and positiveness of that character. That's my piece. How tall is Stallone? 5'10". Is he 5'10"? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm 5'9 and a half. And he's taller than you? A, yeah. So on a really good day with thick hunting socks and a good <laughs> pair of Nikes, I'm 5'10". There are pictures where he and I are eye level. There are pictures where it's a little bit awkward because there's an incline in the sidewalk. I have one, I think, somewhere where we're literally just identical. There's stories with lists and all that. No, I, well, who cares about whatever? I don't care about that kind of stuff. I just heard different height. I know he referred to himself as 5'10 in the Rocky commentary, so I was like, oh, I thought he was. I just thought he was shorter, so he is 5'10. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I just finished reading Chris Kattan from Saturday Night Live, yeah. The Night at the Roxbury Guy. I just finished reading his autobiography. Yeah. Really interesting story. I don't know if you guys know, but he broke his neck while filming a, a sketch on SNL. Oh. Um, and his I life has been very difficult since then. He talks about Sly in the book, and he references being happy that there was finally somebody on set that was the same size as him. There you go. Yeah, oh, sure. It's a little humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's exaggerating probably a little bit, or maybe Chris Kattan's taller than he how thinks about, he is. How about during Copland? Michael, um, what's his name? He's always screaming and cursing on... Rappaport. Yeah, uh, Rapp- Rappaport. Rappaport. So in Rappaport's book, he writes about how the director of Copland, Mangold, had to come over to him and whisper. He goes, um, Michael, do you think you could not talk to Sly about Rocky in between scenes? <laughs> You're taking him out of character. He just kept going on. Sly, man, how about when Rocky did this? <laughs> and Sly is one of these guys. He's so engaging with people, whether it's a fellow actor or a fan. He will talk to you for hours if he has the time. And he couldn't pull himself away, so he had to tell the director. Oh, that wow. Great. That's great. That's, That's great. funny. Well, I mean, Michael Rappaport was every fan at that moment, right? Creed 3 without Sly. Yes or no? No. Hell no. I'm not saying I want to see it, but I think they have to do it. To cement that series as its own thing, how many movies have gotten a part two that didn't get a part three? But my thought for Cree 3 is the only way Cree 3 would work without Sly is Adonis loses the belt at the end, but then he keeps and gains his family. That's my treatment for Cree 3 is that he loses, so to speak, his final match, but he wins. His family's in the ring with him. They're around him. They're gathered around him. I love you. I love you too. The same I love you. I love you. And kisses. Congratulates the new victory because time has now beat Adonis just like it beat his father. But that's okay. He's made peace with that defeat unlike his father. That's to me the character cap for him. There's no point in him losing and winning again. That story's been told how many times? I think to make it original and powerful, he wins his family but doesn't retain the belt at the end of the movie. That's not bad, Ryan. I kind of like that. But how about if we just piggyback that just a little? What if Jason Voorhees comes into the ring and chokes Adonis with the championship belt and kills him? I'll pay to see that. If I was on the think tank for a film that was going to be made, whether we liked it or not, that's how I would redeem it. Well, they're in pre-production right now. So all my anger aside, it will be very interesting to see if a third creed can live up to a Rocky Three, say. Because you know it's going to be compared to Rocky Three. I mean... Does Ty Bo in this discussion, I think we should probably do this again. Yeah, absolutely. I really like this, fellas. I like this. This was great. This was better than I had expected it to be. That sounds like my wife on our wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it sounds like your wife has small expectations. That's never good. Yeah, well, this has been excellent. Uh, why don't you guys plug your stuff before we close? Slycast, which you can hear Mike on when we do new episodes. We recently released three episodes in the last seven days. Uh, our long-awaited Judge Dredd episode, our Creed Two Super Special Part Two that features Ryan and Mike, and then also the special interview discussion I had with Joey Casada, where we talked Rocky Rambo, and he gave us his top five Sly movies. And Assassins is recorded. I just have to edit it. So you can find Slycast on Facebook or Twitter. We love hearing feedback on the shows. And personally, if you want to follow me for whatever reason, you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Craig Cohen. Beautiful. 
uh, I would advise everyone to follow Craig because something you don't know about Craig, he's an amazing opera singer. He puts up these opera singing vignettes. He's amazing. You'll love it. That's maestro Craig Cohen. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, oh seriously. <laughs> as far as me, Kid Kunda, check me out on Instagram, the Yo Philly Rocky Film Tour. Take a look at The Pretender. You're going to love it. It's a great heartwarming movie. If you're looking for a movie where you don't want the tiger to win, look at The Pretender on Amazon Prime and come take my tour at the Yo Philly Rocky Film dot com. Thanks, guys. I'm Ryan from the Going the Distance, the Rocket Series podcast. Find our show on Facebook and on Twitter and on all your podcast apps. And I just want to thank all the people that chatted and asked questions. We didn't get to everyone. I apologize. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And please come back again.